Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Faith Assembly of God. We're glad that you're with us today. We're glad that you're online with us today. Can anyone tell me, I actually want you to talk to me, why are you here today? What are you what do you want from God? What are you hoping for? What are you praying for? What's your expectation today? To worship Him. We come together to give Him praise and honor and glory and worship. What else? An encounter with God. God is not a God of out there. He is a God of right here, and He desires that we would be uh, willing and open and ready to go after Him. He wants that. What else? Give me something else. To hear from Him. Say it, Sonia. And a move from the Holy Spirit. God is here to talk to us, and He wants to give us the power and the presence of His Holy Spirit. So, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to unite we are united with one goal, and that goal is to be in the presence of the Almighty God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, your friend, your lover, your advocate, your savior. He wants to touch us today. His Holy Spirit is powerful. His Holy Spirit is here, and he will move. We just have to be ready. So God, we are ready for you today. We unite as one body of Christ, brothers and sisters, waiting on you, trusting in you, going after you. Take away all of our stuff, God, that we would be able to run after you and to hang out in your presence. And Holy Spirit, we say, move amongst this place. Move, fill us. Fill us today, Father. We choose to worship you. It is all about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put those hands together this morning. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. 
Surrender your heart, surrender your life, lift your hands as you sing it. Lift your hands, all ye people. Make a wave offering to him today. Father, we're on our knees. We worship you. Father, we're on our knees. You might want to do that right in your pew. Wherever you are, get yourself in a position today where your heart is surrendered to Him. Standing, sitting, kneeling. Spirit. Father, we're crying out. Spirit. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious love Sing it again to him, Father, we're on our knees. Father, we're on it's our all knees. about you, oh Lord. With every heart we're desperate for you, Lord. Bring you this offering. Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we need you now. Holy is love, sir. And I will worship you. And I will worship you. Tell them. I will worship you always. We need you, Lord. And I will worship you. We need you, Lord. I worship you. We need you, Lord. Today on the church calendar is marked, as we talked about last week, Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. The Feast of Pentecost, a Jewish festival, Feast of Shavuot. And the Bible tells us, when the day of Pentecost came, they, the disciples, the followers of Jesus, were all together in one place. Suddenly, somebody say suddenly, suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Suddenly, it took place. And I love that because I, I, I just pray today that God would do that which is sudden in our midst today. That as long as the disciples were waiting and they were praying, we know at least about a week and a half since Jesus' ascension back to the right hand of God the Father, they were waiting, they were praying. And as they're waiting, as they're praying together in this place, and waiting and praying day after day, all of a sudden when God shows up, boom, it happens suddenly. It happens suddenly. And Father, we're asking even now that you would just get us in a position 
Get us in a position today, Lord, where we are ready for the sudden. You see, when God shows up in a room, when heaven meets earth, when heaven meets earth, God often shows up in the sudden, in the sudden. And that means you and I, we need to be prepared. Jesus spoke all about this when it came to his second coming, to his return, that it would be sudden. So it's no wonder that when he sends another counselor that would be like him, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came how? Suddenly. Suddenly. And the disciples, they, well, they were in a position, weren't they? We talked about that. They were, they were waiting. They were together. They were praying, and they were focused on their mission. And God wants you today in a position to receive what he wants to send suddenly to you and me today. He wants you in a position. I, I think about watching one of my boys' baseball games recently, and, and I'll tell you what happens. When that ball goes out to that outfield, and the outfielder, whether it be the center fielder or whomever, is not in position to get that ball and catch what's coming down, it drops. They miss it. They miss it. I don't want to miss when God sends the sudden. I can't control when God sends the sudden, neither can you. We can't control it. We can pray our hearts out, but we still cannot control. We can't make the tide come in. We can't send the wave. We can't cause the wind to blow. Jesus said it blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or to where it goes. We can't control, again, he, the Spirit of God, the wind of God blows wherever He pleases, and might I add, He blows whenever He pleases. It's up to you and me to be prepared. And I pray today, through your hearts, through your posture of your hearts, through the posture maybe sometimes that is on the outside as well, because one oftentimes translates into the other, that you would find yourself in a posture of just ready, whether it's up here in the front, finding a space, kneeling down, sitting, standing, in your pew, standing, sitting, kneeling, whatever it might be. But what we're going to do is we're just going to weave in and out of worship and prayer and the Word today, and we're just going to just weave in and out of that time together and just finding these, these truths, these, these nuggets from God's Word about when heaven meets earth. And at the first thing is I just want you to understand when God does that, oftentimes it happens suddenly. It happens suddenly. Let's just prepare ourselves. Let's just open up our hearts. and Let's just say, God... I'm just getting my heart and my mind, my body, my soul in position for what you want to do. Lord, I can't send the wave, but I can be ready to ride it. I can't make the wind blow, but all I know is I can brace myself for when he sends that wind and open up the sails of my heart, my mind, and allow him to blow me where he will, to do what he will. He's not going to force you today. He's not going to force you. And I will worship you. I'll worship you. I'll worship you always. Come Holy Spirit. Yeah, find your place today. This isn't about simply explaining Pentecost today. This is about us experiencing Pentecost today. That's what we came in with a desire for today. Holy Spirit, have your way. Do that which only you can do. Come, Holy Spirit, blow wind of God through your temple. Blow out the chaff in my life. Come, Spirit of God. We open up our hearts and lives to you today. You find that place. Wherever you want to find your place. Find that place. This is your place. This is your time to be in a position of seeking God. Wherever that might be. Front, back, young, old. Wherever it might be. Kneeling, standing. Find your place. Hallelujah. Those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Thank you, Lord. 
send your wave, Holy Spirit. Rushing wind blow through this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. something else today as we continue the Bible tells us that after that sound of a rushing violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting it says they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire they saw what seemed to be so first we've got a sound like a violent wind from heaven coming, this sound, and now they, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that came in and separated and came to rest on each of them, on each of them, each of them. Oh boy, and were they a motley crew? Were they a crew made up with a lot of stories, a lot of regret, a lot of past, a lot of things, a lot of denial and doubt, you name it. Were they a crew? But isn't that amazing that they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And the Bible says in all of them, somebody say all of them. No, no, say all of them. And you know what that word means in the Greek? It means all, all, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. All of them began to speak. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, we pray, O oh God. All of them began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And the people were shocked. They were confused about what was going on. You would be too if all of a sudden you, you, you saw this group of people. And, and they're, they're, these people are gathered from all over the empire, coming to Jerusalem for this Jewish feast of Shavuos or Pentecost. And there they are, and they're, they're all over the place, coming with all sorts of languages they're speaking. And now they're hearing all of these people, men and women, by the way, men and women, who are there, speaking in their languages and they hear them speaking in their languages they hear them declaring the wonders of God in their languages these people they, they a lot of these guys were from sort of you know up in the woods so to speak in Galilee and now they hear all these guys say they hear them speaking in their language and they're confused they don't know and they're asking what does this mean what does this mean and I just want to tell you, when heaven meets earth, things happen suddenly. But I also want you to understand, things happen unexpectedly. Things happen unexpectedly. There's no way that these people all over the empire show up in Jerusalem for this festival thinking and expecting that, well, I think today we're going to see some people and hear some people speaking in our languages that have never spoken our languages before. It was totally unexpected. I just wonder for the disciples themselves as they're praising and all of a sudden they're filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in other tongues. I just wonder like what it is that they're beginning to think and feel and this experience and they're just like, what? I mean, you could take a look at Mark 16 and Jesus says, you know, in, in my name, you know, they'll speak in new tongues and, you know, but, but I still, after all that Jesus said to them and they never understood it about his death and resurrection, there's no way that they understood what Jesus meant. There's no way that they expected that they were going to be doing those things. Not in my book. And this we do know. The people all around them that heard what was happening, saw what was happening, this was totally unexpected. This was crazy to them. It was insane. And I just want to say to you today, I don't know what God wants to do in your life today by His Holy Spirit. But I pray, I pray that you would be open to the unexpected. 
you would be open to the unexpected. I told you, get yourself in a posture. Some of your legs are getting tired. You're going to want to kneel. You're going to want to sit. You're going to want to move forward because we're going to be lingering. We're going to be waiting. That's what today's about, folks. Not just explaining Pentecost, but experiencing it. I don't know what God has for you. It's not up to the pastor to make those calls. The Spirit distributes as He will, as He determines. But I pray that you'd be open to the unexpected. And some of you that have been around Pentecostal church for a long time, guess what? You oftentimes can put God in that same box that other people do as well. You can say, this is the only way that God's going to show up in my life. And those of you that have never had this phenomenon of being baptized in the Holy Spirit with this speaking in other tongues, some of you have drawn lines in the sand and you've just said, I guess that's not for me. Who says it's not for you? Who says it's not for you? Well, I've never had that experience before. Okay, that was up till now. That was up till this moment. But what if, what if God was just saying, get in position? Just be ready for what I want to do. It's going to come suddenly. It's going to come unexpectedly. So I pray even right now, folks, that's, that's, what God's, that's what God is just working in our hearts. Listen, unexpected. If all of a sudden you're sensing like, I, I, just, I just want to begin to speak to God and, and praise him and, and, and pray and sing in a language I've never learned before, I just want to say, go for it. Let the unexpected happen. If it's like, I just want to start dancing in God's presence, they're going to start singing this song. Again, come rest on us come rest on us as they start and, and you're just like I just want to start dancing in the spirit go for it if you're like I just have to start laughing you know one of my brothers when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit and filled for the first time he laughed for about a half hour straight this was way before it was sort of the popular thing going on going on and, and they were making you know big movements about it this is what happens when and others of you here I've been in your presence where all of a sudden the Holy Spirit hit and you began to you began to just laugh there's been times where I just couldn't stop weeping couldn't stop weeping all of a sudden you're like I need to pray out I need to speak out I need to just praise him right now I need to just fall on my face prostrate before him I just want to say as God begins to speak to your heart God begins to just move you toward the unexpected the unexpected go for it go for it this is worship let's press in with this song Again, I'm going to continue to encourage you. Find a place. Press in. Let the posture of your body reflect the posture of your soul today. Lead us in that song. Let's cry out to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We make it our prayer to you. We make it our prayer to you. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and void. And the Spirit of God hovered over the deep. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Make it your prayer. Come rest on us. Make it your prayer. Come rest on us. Let's press into Him. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Oh, swing open your arms to Him if you have to. Do it, Lord. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you will feel me. Have your way. Do the unexpected, Lord, in our lives. Change lives today, Lord. As the Spirit was moving over the waters, Spirit come moving.
Lord. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him with your own words. Allow Him to fill you today. God's prompting you. He's filling you with His Holy Spirit. He's baptizing and immersing you today. Just begin. Just begin. Remember all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak as the Spirit enabled them. The Spirit enabled them, but they spoke. The Spirit enabled them, but they spoke. And in the same way that you and I, as God speaks to us, it's up to us to open our mouths to speak a word in our native language, to speak God's word out in prophecy. It's the same thing when God begins to flow and give you this speaking in other tongues. He's not going to just grab your tongue and just start forcing you. So allow him to fill you. Just allow him to fill you. Just be hungry for him. Be open for the unexpected right now. 
thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. Impart the gifts as you desire, Lord. Impart the gifts as you desire today. Impart the gifts as you desire. Sometimes when that happens, it's happening in such a way so that there's to be an interpretation in a corporate setting. Sometimes we're just praying and praising God on our own and other tongues, but other times there's time. So let's be open. If God's prompting you, God's speaking to your heart about an interpretation, something God's putting there. Be obedient to the Lord. You can come to me if you'd like. Let's be obedient to the Lord. As you step out in faith, trust that the body here will be faithful in doing our part to evaluate whether or not this is truly an interpretation from the Lord. So don't be scared. You, you step out in faith. Leave it to the Holy Spirit and to the body here to evaluate whether or not it's something truly from the Lord. uses Janice today. Let's be open to hearing what God is saying. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Even now, we pray that you would give us ears to hear, hearts to believe and receive your word today. The Lord was saying that I am here, I am here in the midst of you. And it's the Lord's desire that you would know him even as we are known of him, that he knows us, that he's here today to restore, to renew, to heal and deliver. He came to set the captive free. So if you're captivated by fear or uncertainty about the baptism of his Holy Spirit, he's here to free you of that. It is his, de his desire not to just sprinkle us, but to immerse us in his Holy Spirit 
that we can enter the next stages of his move with power and authority that can only come through the move of his Holy Spirit. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You're in our midst to set captives free, to bring healing today, to bring healing today, to bring healing today. If you need physical healing today, you need physical healing today, we're going to just invite you to come. We're going to pause right now. If you need physical healing today, I'm just going to pause. We're going to invite you to come. We're going to pray with you. We'll just give that moment just to open up that opportunity. You need healing today. It might be on other levels, <laughs> emotionally, mentally. You need healing today. Our prayer team, thank you for coming, coming alongside us. Danita just has a word that God's just laying on our heart. Let's be open. Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, I just feel in, that, that the Lord is saying that um, we need to um, renew our hearts to him. We need, if anyone needs healing of their heart emotionally, we need to ask for forgiveness for maybe someone that we have wronged to come to him, you know, knowing that we're forgiven, Lord. But just to, to examine your hearts this morning, Lord God see where your relationship was with the Lord and just ask him as Pastor John was saying to baptize you in, in his Holy Spirit but please check your hearts to see if your minds are distracted focus on him only just check your heart it's just make sure your hearts are right before him thank you thank you others coming for prayer for healing in this moment is coming for prayer for healing as well. It's not about us today. It's about the work of the Holy Spirit in this place. We anoint with oil in obedience to God's word as a symbol of God's anointing and Holy Spirit today. In the name of Jesus. There's areas today that you need to you need to deal with. Be real with God. Be real with God. Those things that Danita was speaking forth had to do with unforgiveness. Things that the Lord was bringing forth, even through Janice, talking about again those those walls that we can put up. And meanwhile, God is in our midst, and He wants us to know Him, even as He knows us. He wants to heal us. It's amazing that as unexpected and as sudden as things were, on that day of Pentecost, they happened, what I would say, they happened accordingly. And when heaven meets earth, and God shows up in a room, things happen suddenly, they happen unexpectedly, unexpectedly, they happen accordingly, though. And that as sudden, as unexpected as they were, they were things that lined up with the Word of God. They were in accordance with the Word of God. Remember, as the people are there and they're wondering, what does this mean? This is confusing. I know these guys must be drunk. That's what's going on. That's why they seem to be babbling in these languages. That's what's going on here. They, 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 must, be, they, they, they must be drunk. And Peter and the eleven other apostles, they stand up and they address the crowd. And he says, fellow Jews and everyone living in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. I love it because the explanation comes after the experience. And a lot of times we're so caught up 
I know I can be, in, in explaining things and explaining things, explaining things. And I know what happens. A lot of us are thinking, oh, that's not, that's not, because you know what it is? We don't understand the explanation because we have no point of reference for an experience. And God doesn't want you just coming in and out of church week after week going through explanations. He actually wants to explain things to you and me as we experience them. But if you think that you're going to have everything explained to you first, well, you're going to be waiting a long time. That's going to be a pretty miserable, frustrating road. I would much rather experience God any day for things that I don't understand than have everything explained to me and never know his touch, never know his power. Things happened accordingly. Things happened accordingly. And, and he said, listen, listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only 9 in the morning. It's only 9 in the morning. That would have been some partying they were doing if they were drunk already at 9 in the morning. He says, no, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. You know that Hebrew prophet who spoke about 800 years before this? This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says. Somebody say, in the last days. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Somebody say to your neighbor, that means you. That means you. That means you. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Ladies, you've got just as much business speaking the word of God as men do. I'm just going to say that. Why? Because it says your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Shall prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Any young men in the house? Any young men in the house? I don't know. You're still young? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still young. If you're younger than me, Rudy, I don't know about that. That's, that's, thank you for doing that. Now you made me feel really young. Yes, I see that hand. Young men. All right, now here comes the number. Your young men will see visions. Your old men. I won't ask for this one. I won't ask for this one. And ladies, you can take that as well. Young men, young women, old men, old women. Young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord. Young men will see visions, old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And they shall prophesy. Think about it. As unexpected, as crazy as things were, as insane as it seemed that day, Peter brought them right back and said, this is happening in accordance to what God has promised. So today is not about some sort of spiritual free-for-all. It's not about us just doing whatever we want without any foundation in the Word of God. Because I know for some of us, we get a little scared of these things, and we think, I don't want God to give me something really weird just to be weird. God's not going to, He's not in the business of just giving you something weird just to make you weird. He's not going to give you something for no purpose. It's not about that. What he wants to give you is something that's going to be fruitful for you and for the rest of the church. He wants to give you something that empowers you for this journey. He wants to give you something that will make a difference, not only in your life, but in the lives of all those that you touch. This is about fulfillment of what God says he was going to do. So as you seek him, as we continue to seek him today, over these next several minutes. I just want you to know, if those barriers are there and you're wondering, I just don't want that weird thing. Just know that what God is going to do and when he's moving, he does things accordingly. Accordingly. Even if this one has a revelation and this one has a tongues and interpretation of him, it all happens accordingly. It happens decently and in order, but it also happens accordingly in alignment with his word according to what he has promised. I pray as we continue to seek the Lord that you would just know, you would just know, and you would pray with me, God, would you pour out your spirit on your church, including me, in accordance with what you promised? In accordance with what you promised, Lord. Set a fire. Sing it. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more Do it as you promised, you, Lord, God. in accordance with your word. For your name's sake and for the sake of your word. That I can't contain, 
that I can't control. I want more Come on, press of in. you, God. Come on, press in. You might need to I move yourself. You might need to kneel down, God. stand up, or move Set forward wherever you need to be. down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. Keep my prayer, oh God. I want more Set of you, Set a fire. God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more No of place. You, God. Sing no place. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place. No place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place. No place I would rather be. No, no, no. No place I would rather be. Set a fire, set a fire, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. Tell them, I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't. We want, we want more of you, God. We want more. hungry with good things. You feel the hungry with good things. You promised, you promised you would give good things, your Holy Spirit to those who ask you. Hallelujah, Lord. Do it in accordance with your word. Do it in accordance with your promise. Swing wide the gates of heaven and let it rain on us, Lord. Can I do it without you? No place, no place. No place I would rather be. No, no, no place I would rather be. No, 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 no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be. Thank you, Lord. No place I would rather Hallelujah. be. Hallelujah. No place I would rather be. Sing, so come, love, Holy Spirit. You move, you make my heart pound When you feel the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me Calm down Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound When you feel the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me Hallelujah, hallelujah Sold to him today. You're all we want. You're all we want. Sing it again. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. Yes, you're all we want. We want. Sing it. Holy Set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. Hear your children's cry today. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. Hallelujah, 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 
Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We welcome. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you today. We welcome you today. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We open our hearts, open our lives, open our mind. We ask you to open our eyes, open our ears to hear you today, open our hearts to believe and receive you today. One of the pieces I want you to see today. Heaven meets earth, things happen suddenly, they happen unexpectedly, they happen accordingly, but they also happen graciously, graciously. Graciously. If you're here in this place or watching today thinking that this is something that you have to be good enough to receive, you're missing the point of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is not about being better today, trying harder today. This is not about you somehow getting all the rules and regulations of religion right today. This is about a message that says, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith, not by works, so that no one can boast. For it is by grace you've been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, so that no one can boast. Think about it. The people that day, when Peter preached this message on that day of Pentecost, the Bible says they were cut to the heart. Why? Because he said, God has made this Jesus. Man, he was bold. Because before this, they were cowering in fear. He says, God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. He said to the onlooking crowd, God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And the Bible says they were cut to the heart. Cut to the heart. And they said, what shall we do? Brothers, what are we supposed to do now? And he, he didn't say to them, sorry guys, it's too late. You've gone too far. You've committed the unpardonable sin. No, I'm sorry, there's no hope for you. Forget about forgiveness. Forget about this gift of the Holy Spirit. Forget about it. No, no, that's not what he said. He told them very clearly, repent. Make a turn. Turn your heart, your mind, your attitude. Turn it away from yourself and thinking that you're good enough. And turn it. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Dorean. You will receive the Dorean. In Greek, it's about this free gift. It's about this free gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and for your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. We're going to talk about this in a little while afterwards. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. If anything is going to make sense for you today in all of this, at the end of the day when all was said and done, at the end of that first day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out, at the end this is what it says. And 3,000 people accepted the message and were baptized. And the Lord added to their number. If it's not about you and I firstly surrendering our hearts and lives to Jesus, trusting in Him rather than in ourselves. Everything we're talking about, everything we're praying for, it's just all bust. It's null. It's void. It's without 
any real purpose. But everything that God did that day, and I can tell you right now, there are some of you here in this room, you walked into this place, and a lot of this is a little bit strange to you, but I just want to ask you this. Do you know religion today? Even if you've been growing up in this church, or it's your first time here, do, do you know religion today, or do you know a relationship with the living God through Jesus? Through Jesus. Religion kills, it will make you frustrated and miserable. Those that keep scorecards in this life, they are the most miserable kind. But a relationship with the living God is freeing. It's freeing. God's Holy Spirit is in this place today. He's not here to condemn. It's not about condemnation today. It's about salvation. It's not about rejection. It's about acceptance. It's about forgiveness. It's about mercy. It's about grace. Would you hear me today? Some of you have been beating yourselves up so badly, thinking God could never forgive me. Some of you, even in the Pentecostal church, and you have this background, some of you have been saying, I'll, I'm never going to be good enough to receive this, this, this infilling, this baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in other tongues. I'm never going to be good enough for that. Not after what I've done. Not after how I've messed up. Not after the things that I... I, I've, I've committed. And I just want to say to you, regardless of where you've been or what you've done, if God could offer the people, the people that were guilty and responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus, don't you think that he can forgive you? Don't you think if they were promised the gift of the Holy Spirit, don't you think that there's no way in the world that you should be counting yourself out. But you don't understand, Pastor John. You don't, don't stop the lies. I pray those lies would be silenced right now in the name of Jesus. Every lie silenced right now in the name of Jesus. Kivian's going to lead us in this song. Kivian's going to sing this song over us. Kivian's going to sing this song over us. And maybe there's more than just a few of you today who need to get right with God. Whether you're churched or you're not churched. You need to get right with God. And this song's gonna be all about coming to Him, coming to this altar, a, a representation today of coming to Jesus, to your Heavenly Father today for forgiveness, for a new beginning. And I pray today that that promise, you would experience that promise today just as well as you repent, as you turn to Jesus today that you will experience his forgiveness today and the gift of his Holy Spirit filling your life to overflowing. Overflowing. Let's stand across this room right now. Standing all across this room. Standing all across this room. I don't care how many years you've been churched. I don't care if you're the youngest teenager in the back pew trying to hide from everybody else, still playing games on your phone, or whether you're a person that fell asleep for the first part of the service and now you just woke. If, listen, that night when God put his finger on my heart and called me down to that altar, I can't tell you a lick of what was preached before that. But all I know in that moment, God's Holy Spirit went, you, right now, right now, right now. Come on, you need to make things right with God today. You need his forgiveness. Let today be a new beginning. When heaven meets earth and God shows up in a room, things happen I love it graciously. Oh, we thank you for your grace. Come on, I'm going to ask you to come to this altar. You need his forgiveness today. You need a new start. I'm going to ask you to come. Nothing holding you back. Nothing holding you back. Sing it over them. Sing it over them. Are you hurting and broken within? His arms are open wide to you today. Overwhelmed by his arms are open wide to you today. Jesus is calling. You need forgiveness for unforgiveness. Have you come, come to the end of yourself? Whatever it might be. Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Let me pause. Teenagers, in this room, some of you have been excusing have been excusing your disobedience and disrespect to your parents 
you've been excusing it thinking they're just old they just don't understand let me tell you right now you will never go further in your walk with Christ you will never go deeper in the Holy Spirit you'll never be able to do that as long as you don't get first things first right and one of the first things that God makes very clear to us in his word is children obey your parents honor your father and your mother teens across this room right now I don't care this is not a Friday night you need to make things right with God and right with your mom or right with your dad whoever it is that you have at home as that guardian as that parent you need to make things right I'm gonna ask you to come come and start here but if you have a mom or a dad in this room that you need to go to you go to them and by the way in case anybody thinks I'm not talking to my boys today that's between them and God that has nothing to do they, they know I love them I would never do that to them teens do not push this off as something for somebody else see that chorus However you fit into this. Come to the altar. Come on. The Father's He's not going to reject you. He's not going to push you away. This is not about condemnation. Was bought with the precious blood. He wants to free us. He wants to forgive us. He wants us to experience the abundant life in him. The altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Press into Him, reaching out to Him. Peter said on that day, as he came to the closing of that section of Joel's prophecy, he got to that part and he said, Everyone. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today, as you call on the name of the Lord Jesus, you can rest confident that you will be saved. You'll be rescued from the penalty of your sin. Praise God for what he's provided for you and me. Call on him today. Turn to him today. He's here to meet you and free you. Today there's no reason to wait, but Jesus is calling. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. Come on, press in. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Come on, hear the Spirit's call today. Oh, come to the altar. Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open Come on, do not leave this place the same way you came in if you need that today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Come on, let's lift up an anthem. Bow down before him, for he is the Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior. Come on, sing it out. Oh, what a
here for some of you and the wall is this I don't want to go down I don't want to step forward I don't want to step out into this place of grace with Jesus because I'm afraid I'm gonna mess up again I'm afraid I'm gonna pull the cycle again I'm afraid I'm just gonna go on that merry-go-round again where I'm like yes Lord yes Lord forgive me I want to do it and then I'm back and then I'm back and then I'm back and all I can tell you is that if Jesus taught us to forgive others not seven times but 70 times seven I can only imagine what that means for his forgiveness for us that the God of the universe would forgive us how many times how many times that's right beyond beyond every time like beyond don't let that that lie stop you you surrender your heart and your life to him you pour out your soul before him you allow him to pour his grace the Bible talks about that he would pour out on his people a spirit of grace and supplication a spirit of grace and supplication God's pouring out his spirit of grace and supplication in this room right now you trust him with tomorrow you give him today you give him today. You give him this moment. You turn to him. You surrender to him. Kivian's going to just sing it again, that chorus. And if that wall's been there blocking some of you, saying, I just don't want to go through the motions again, you, you bust down that wall. You kick through that wall. There's nothing magical about up here, but it is something that it represents. Something that it represents. For some of you, it represents a whole lot. Come to Come on. The Father's arms are Chains broken right now. Chains snapped right now. Fear and condemnation snapped right now in the name of Jesus. But God has not given us again, a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Getting off that merry-go-round. Getting off that cycle today. We're burning that merry-go-round. Fear is not going to hold us back. Fear is not going to hold us back. No fear, no fear in the Spirit of God. No fear, no fear in the presence of the Lord. No fear, no fear. In the spirit of God, no fear, no fear. In the presence of the Lord, no fear, no fear. In the spirit of God, no fear, no fear. In the presence of the Lord, no fear, no fear. In the spirit of God, no fear, no fear. In the presence of the Lord. the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. You tell him today, you need forgiveness in this place. You tell him right now. You pray this prayer out to him. You say, dear God, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for bringing me to this point right now. Nothing with you is by chance. It's not an accident that I'm here right now. And I thank you that you know me, you know my story, and you love me still. You proved your love when you sent Jesus to the cross for me. I thank you, Jesus, for living for me, perfectly for me, for dying for me on the cross for being buried for me in the tomb, for being raised for me from the dead 
I thank you, Jesus, that you are ascended to the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for me. I ask you today, forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean. Oh, Lord, wash me clean. Give me a brand new beginning and help me from this point forward by the power of your Holy Spirit that you're filling me with even now, that you're filling me with even now, every day for you. I thank you, Jesus, that I am a child of God. I have the hope of heaven. I am secure in you. And I thank you that you are my God. And I am your child. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Something like Yevarachecha Adonai Vayishmarecha Yaer Adonai Panavelecha Vichunecha Yisa Adonai Panavelecha Veyasem Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.